I am the kind of guy who would actually, you know, try to take this thing for a rip in the middle of the winter, but in this case, just brought it into the garage to melt the snow off and start some long overdue renovations. I'm sure I confused a few of the neighbors, just uh, why this thing was hooked up to the car this time of year. But I think that it's time. Close that door and uh, turn the heat on. And it seems to be full of this strange white substance. I feel like the responsible thing to do is to put a bucket under this drain hole before I turn on the heat. I have seen some dank looking water before, but that, that is nasty. First order of business is the anchor. When you're out prospecting, you're throwing this anchor out, pulling it back in over and over and over again. And what I used to do was I'd have it kind of just tucked down over here. It gets muddy. I, I might actually have some gear down here. I don't always want that anchor to be down here. And if I leave it up front here, well, guess what? It just rattles all over the place. Uh, not so good. So I'm going to... I was originally thinking of building like an anchor locker, like make a little hole here so it kind of slots down in there. And then I figured, all right, what's the simplest solution here? This is what I came up with. If I just sort of lean the anchor up against the front like this, it'll eventually sort of slide away. But since I have this piece of aluminum lying around, if I basically build this, cut the ends and, and close the ends off so it can't slide sideways, then as it tries to fall, it'll just push into this. And then I just weld this to the deck right front and center. I'll cut this up and get it welded. Hopefully this solves that problem. My theory is that if I if I do it kind of like this, so I've actually got these pieces um, going in and underneath, then I'll have a very slight gap under here just so that a little bit of water can drain and not rust the tips out, whatever. But also I can just rivet this thing down because it's gonna be a little bit tricky to weld to that thin checker plate. And this way, if I, if I don't like the design, I can just drill out the rivets and we're good to go. Yeah, that looks really good. The only thing I'll do is, there's just a tiny bit, like the weld's actually not coming down. I'm just gonna smooth the bottom out so it sits flat. And then the anchor can lean in right like that. Sweet. If this anchor sits flat on the boat and this goes right tight to there, then it would work pretty good. But if I do slide this in a little bit, then it sort of leans up on the front of the boat and I feel like it won't rattle around quite as much. Of course, if I come in too far, then it sort of gets locked in there and it wouldn't, wouldn't be able to come out. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make it almost flat, but I'm gonna take this and from where the anchor would sit perfectly flat, I'm just gonna move this a quarter inch in just so that it's slightly tight to that. And that way the anchor will be right tight to the bottom and I can actually sort of pinch my anchor rope underneath that to, to act as something to, you know, just organize all the rope. Double check. Oh yeah, that's right solid. It doesn't want to move anywhere. It's just hovering up there. Right there, okay. So got these 3 16 rivets. They're pretty sturdy. I'm going to drop one right here. Now before I drill both holes, I'm going to put a rivet in the first hole just to make sure that it's all actually lined up. Good and tight there. These are like right at the limit of what you can do with this gun. All right. And far side.
and she goes. All right, so that's in there pretty solid. I will add two more rivets just because I can, but, oh yeah, there's, there's no rattle. It's just happy right there. I love it. I guess I could just weld that, but we'll see how this works out first. All right, yeah, that feels pretty solid. So it all kind of just lays there fairly nicely. And this does seem like a pretty small step, but it's something that you do often when you're out there. And normally this anchor really does take a lot of real estate in the front of this boat. I can't just put things here because it'll rattle off the front and it has to go all the way down and into the boat. So this really does allow me a little bit more freedom in how I store everything else on the boat. Quick, easy fix and uh, just one less thing to think about out there on the river. How to not chop your fingers off, 101. Now this piece, I just want to be able to wrap my anchor rope kind of around here. And this piece is just going to give me a little bit better of a hook. Just so, you know, when this is loose, I don't have it flipping over the front and maybe start to drag in the water on me. I'm sure there's some sort of a popular product people buy that serves this exact purpose. I know on larger boats, um, like you'd actually just have an anchor winch, a little place for it and everything. You need more weight, more money, and my, like, it's, it's on that line of being light enough that this works, and I'd rather just save the, save the extra weight and the money. I kind of want to just stitch up the back of the boat here so there's a little hole here and I could just put a little piece of metal over that and close it up. But it's also an opportunity to kind of improve the looks slightly. So purely for cosmetic reasons, I'm thinking of taking my circular saw and just sort of cutting along one of these triangles. And then in theory, I should just be able to cut a little triangular plate and weld it onto everything. It should be good. Uh, at least that's the plan. So I've tilted the circular saw to 30 degrees and I, I guess we're just going to hope that this isn't a really bad idea. Worst case is it sinks even worse than it would have before, but let's hope, let's hope that's not the case. Oh yeah, these things need batteries. Hmm, that actually worked. Now you be the judge, but I think with a little piece of diamond plate over that, it will look better than the random squared off edge that was there before. Well, the welding turned out a little better on the far side, but I would say that that is quite an improvement. Not too bad. A couple next steps I'd really like to do is to fill this gap at the back. But considering my engine is on here right now, it's a little hard to take that off. I'm going to save that uh, till later. I can go through the entire summer with this open. I'm not going to get any trouble. I am concerned about waves in the ocean coming in through this hole. And uh, strangely enough, I do want to take this out to the ocean. Probably won't happen in 2022. But what I can do is just sort of stitch up this fairing a little bit. So right now, this piece of aluminum, it's just roughly sitting in place. I can gently flex that down as I weld it in. And I kind of just want to complete this fairing. There'll be a cover that goes over here as well. The purpose of that is I'm going to have some rainproof storage back here. I want to do some things with the battery mounting, maybe some electronics and some switches. And I'd just like to have a glove box. Some place I can keep a pair of clear safety glasses for running at night, sunglasses for running during the day because you always get bugs in your eyes and just a place to put my uh, videoing equipment when I'm out on the river that's easy to access and out of the weather. With stuff like this, it kind of takes shape as I go. So I've got both sides done and I'm envisioning the end result to sort of have this section covered. But I just set these here temporarily because, well, I don't actually have the right size scrap to weld in there yet. I'm not gonna buy one, I'm gonna 
work on some other stuff until I get a scrap that sort of fits that size. But the idea is that the back of this boat is all kind of covered up here. And then underneath here, I can, you know, mount something with some, maybe some switches on it. If I put lights or uh, to run my bilge pump on and off, just make it a little bit more official. And I'm just, I'm not 100% sure what that's going to look like yet. So the next step, I think, is going to be this floor. And just to give you a quick rundown, right now I have my cooler and I've got this acting as a bit of a shim just to tilt the cooler forwards because when I'm running on the river, you know, the front of the boat comes up a little bit. And so the back of the cooler comes up and then I'm sitting on a flat surface. But I think for the actual floor, I do have a four by 10 piece of this diamond plate. And so my options are to run it straight down the middle and it won't be quite wide enough for the boat. Or I can do it in two sections that run across like this and that'll get me eight feet. And eight feet will bring me right to this gas tank area. And then I've basically just got a little section between the front of the boat and where the floor will be here. And I feel like I can fill that in later. It could even dip down a little bit for some kind of a storage setup. So I think it makes sense to run the pieces across this way. I do wanna put some foam underneath, which would mean this floor is gonna get raised up a little bit. And that'll be great if I do go out to the ocean, just have some actual flotation. But kind of what I'm thinking, this just comes down straight from the side of the boat here. So when this comes straight down like this, that would be a perfect place to have my floor right at this height. And that means, I'm not sure what that is, like four inches, maybe four to five inches, which would be plenty of flotation foam. And it's, it's all just like, how do I actually put together, again, from this back section here, I'm gonna leave open, maybe put like a bit of a, like a block there so stuff doesn't roll down and into the bilge, but I kind of want to go from there all the way up to here. That's eight feet by a little over four feet wide. And I think that should give me some pretty good real estate as well as some foam. And I'm just, I'm not sure if I want to slant the entire floor forwards. So if I decide to sleep in the boat, I'm sleeping on a flat surface or if that really makes any sense. Anyways, there's, there's all sorts of stuff to think about. And I, I, I mean, it's kind of a big, just me yapping at the camera section, but this is what you go through. Like, I don't have a set plan. I'm not following drawings. It's just, what can I do to make this boat work? And as I, I'll pick something, I'll say, oh, let's go with this idea. And then from there, as I build it up, um, the idea evolves and it ends up being different at the end than it was at the beginning, <laughs> most likely. So I'm hoping that if I get this floor in and I have the floor built up to the back so it's a little higher, then I'll have a scrap piece of that that I can, you know, stitch over here. And then I'll have a better idea of like, this is where I'm sitting. This is, you know, how thick that'll be. This is what the environment's gonna be like. Where do I want a glove box to be? Where am I actually gonna have my switch panel based on where I'm sitting with the, the tiller? And hopefully it all just comes together. Ah, uh, there's a beautiful thing. Still a bit dirty, but plenty good enough to work with.